in case you need them. We're going to get started. I think a lot of people are about to start pouring in. A lot of people are going to be watching on the Discord, so I don't know. The YouTube streaming number might be low, but yeah, I think somebody's streaming on the Discord now. All right, everybody. Today we have Rack's been with us. He is a TikTok star and you're a Mises affiliate. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, our partner, whatever, partner. whatever word you want to use. Yeah. I don't, I don't know the terminology, but uh, I know you work with uh, the Mises Institute. So um, is there anything else you'd like to introduce about yourself or maybe give them a rundown of your politics for uh, those that aren't familiar? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm the biggest uh, American or English um libertarian tiktoker um maybe the biggest libertarian of gen z i don't know at least at least as far as like english speaking people go i know there's people in latin america who are bigger you know they're up there who get up there in like the millions of followers or close to that anyways um but yeah i mean english speaking as far as i know i'm one of the most followed uh and most well known with gen z libertarians and I uh, have the biggest TikTok as well. Uh, I'm in the ANCAP, anarcho-capitalist, uh, mostly in the Hoppian tradition. I uh, also love like Michael Humer, a few, few other guys like that. Uh, yeah, that, that's about it. Um, so people are pouring in now, but I guess just to, to get us started and get us kicked off with a, a good introductory question, who would you consider your biggest influences? I know you just named two of them, but. Yeah, biggest influences. So um, I, I can kind of uh, break that down into two, two questions that could be asked with the same wording. And one would be the people who actually like got me to where I am. And two would be like, as of now, like the people, you know, that I'm looking up to, right? Because there, there's people along the way that kind of helped me go down that path. And that would be like, starting off with, with some of the basics like John Stossel uh, and Yarn Brook down the road. Yarn Brook, you know, he, he's an objectivist. He, he, he doesn't like people like me or people like us, um, an anarchists, but he, he's a really smart guy. And he, uh, his like lecture on the morality of capitalism is great. I've listened to it like three times and I, I, I can't recommend it enough. And his book, um, Equality is Unfair, is, is one of the most underrated books in politics today. It should be very widely known, especially among um, libertarians and right-wingers in general. It should be pretty far up there because uh, uh, um, it's just a really great book. Uh, uh, David from uh, Liberty Memes, he, he was a big influence on getting me to be a, uh, a libertarian. I still see him occasionally at libertarian events. He's, he's a really cool guy. Uh, and then Mises is the one that really got me into uh, Austrian economics. Then from there, um, David Friedman is the one that converted me to an anarcho-capitalist, actually directly, like directly speaking to him. Um, he, he made a good case for it. So that was really cool. But yeah, now my current influences would mostly be Hans Hermann Hoppe, um, a big fan of his critiques of democracy, especially. Uh, all this stuff on time preference, which, you know, he, he derives a lot from Bombawark. And then uh, Michael Humer, who uh, I, I would love to read more into. I know he's got a ton of uh, other things besides his uh, anarchism, but, you know, his, his criticisms of like social contract theory and stuff like that are just so good. And his, uh, f from what I've gotten into so far, his ethical intuitionism is really cool and solid. Um, yeah, we've had it, like, there's, there's, uh, closer people that I more personally know, like Jeff Deist and Phil Bishop, who are 
um, great inspirations to me and great helps. Honestly, they, they always have great things to say to me and um, love, love being around R really great guys. Um, so I guess speaking like before 20th century, who would be your, like your biggest influence, like maybe before 20th century. century. Hmm. That's a tough one. Uh, I feel like, I feel like John Locke would be such a, such a, a basic answer to that question. Um, I just have, I don't, I haven't read enough like classical people, but maybe like, maybe like Bastiat, Friedrich Bastiat. Uh, but uh, uh, for the most part, it's, it's really, I, re I really need to read into more people. You know, there's Lysander Spooner too, of course, but I, I think, I think Bastia is the one who's had like more influence on me. Because if I remember correctly, like then the broken window fallacy come from Bastia? Uh, or was that, or was that say? I think it was Bastia. 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 If I remember, yeah. it says it in economics one lesson somewhere. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Bastian. Yeah. Um, so Mises Caucus pretty much just took over the LP. Like, are you excited about that? Or are you one of those people that's more like, yeah, I don't think it's going to make a difference either. Uh, I, I, I'm half and half. Um, I don't hate the Mises Caucus. And I'm excited about what they did. It's, it's really cool, actually. Um, it's impressive, too. But like what I'm thinking is like, imagine if they had, they had done like this but done it in like the, the GOP, you know, like put all these, all this time and all these resources into like taking over a bunch of like areas with the GOP and like putting in a bunch of like Austrian, you know, ANCAP guys in the, in the Republican party and like getting them elected. Cause like YAL is sort project. of doing that. Yeah. And we free state project, um, you know, free state project that New Hampshire, it's, it's, all republicans in office there's like what freaking one libertarian in office but that's just the party there's a lot of libertarians in office in new hampshire and they're presenting like very libertarian um legislator le legislation and yl the young americans for liberty that's uh i believe ron paul started that organization they're currently doing a bunch of grassroots campaigns across the country getting uh legislators elected uh D different people who are very libertarian but they're running as republicans and they've got like i think it's up to 200 now uh, close to 200. i think it's over that maybe Even yeah their, their goal was like 250 um last i checked it was like they were like at 280 something so it could be it could be like yeah. 200 now because we just had a lot of elections um so the, i mean seeing something like that is a, is a big white pill but it's just kind of like I kind of wish Mises Caucus was like getting in on that. I think we would have made a lot more ground, but you know, it, it's still uh, it's still a net positive having the Mises Caucus in charge of the uh, Libertarian Party now. I would say. So, are you familiar with the GOP Mises Caucus? Somewhat, yeah. I think that's Phil Bishop that does that or something. Yeah. Um, I don't, I've argued with him before, so, so I I don't know because they were talking about something about protectionism, but I, I do think the idea of like a the GOP Mises caucus is, is like really solid and, and that could be like um, a good uh, maybe it, like if it is successful, it would be a lot more impactful than, than taking over the Libertarian Party. So do you think that TikTok is an effective vessel for spreading liberty? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, TikTok in just a couple of short years became the biggest social media app. You know, there's over a billion users. A lot of people use it. And it, it's especially you know, focused on younger people. And that's kind of the people we should be uh, reaching now. Um, as you have the next generation coming, we're already voting. You know, I've, I've voted. I'm, I'm 21 now. I'm, I'm Gen Z. There's some people a little bit older than me who are Gen Z. You know, we're, we're already doing this stuff. We're, we're getting politically active. And Gen Z is very politically active. Uh, I mean, <laughs> unless it comes to voting. <laughs> um, but uh yeah, yeah. I mean, I've reached a lot of people from TikTok and I've seen other people reach people from TikTok, but unfortunately we don't have a ton of um, creators doing the same thing, going after TikTok, or at least not people who are like doing the, 
the TikTok style, if that makes sense, right? I mean, it's a whole different Cato <laughs> and and Reason and Ayn Rand Indus Institute and people like that, they all have got their like TikTok accounts, but they're, they're like, you know, they got like 200 followers, a thousand followers. And, and, you know, they're, they're putting like a lot of money into these things. I know how much money some of these people are putting into it because they've, they've paid me to make videos for them. They put a lot of money into it and they get like nothing. It's like, oh, I just spent like 30 bucks to get 50 views. Wow. Great, great going. I mean, that, that was completely useless. It's because they're not actually, um, they're not actually adapting, right? They're taking like stuff from YouTube and stuff from podcasts and stuff like that, which can work if you do it right. You have to edit it, right? It's it's a yeah. whole different thing. Yeah, because I've done that. Uh, like I, I went and I got some clips from from a Reason thing recently. Um, they did, they had a video on, on gun control and I posted a clip from it and I do very specific things with clips. I present them in very certain ways. Um, you know, I'll speed them up just slightly to where you can't tell, but to where it gets done several seconds sooner. I'll cut parts out that are unnecessary, you know, or silences, stuff like that, you know, cutting everything down and then I'll put the right captions and stuff like that. I'll put a, uh, closed captions and, and stuff works, but lots of these people, they'll just throw something on there. It's like, nobody's interested in that video you just posted from this clip of this interview. Like literally nobody's interested in this. Um, why are you, why are you even posting it? Like find out what people are interested in and want to see, and then post that. Right. Like yeah, I, I've, I've been doing TikTok for like over two years now. So I've, I've just learned, you know, how people are. And not, not only that, but I'm one of those people, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the younger generation and the, the people I'm actually like speaking to. Um, whereas, you know, oftentimes these uh, guys who are running the TikTok accounts were like in their 30s or 40s. I don't know. <laughs> and um, yeah. a lot of these, these, I, I reason I think figured out YouTube at least, but like, you're just starting to figure out YouTube, which has been around for like 10 years. And then you're trying to go to an entirely different way of consuming media. And they're just not very, um, they don't, you have to pay attention to detail and really understand what's going on. Too. Yeah. That's why you get um, people who know what they're doing with, with TikTok. Uh, that, that's what some people are learning and they're coming to me. Um, so the, 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 these libertarian organizations and they're like asking me for advice or asking me to make, make videos for them, which is good. That's exactly what they should be doing. They should be coming to me they should be going to other people who are who are familiar with that and who are actual um tiktokers that, that's a that's a exactly they're doing exactly the right thing when they do that instead of just trying to f f throw shots in the dark and wasting money um doing whatever uh and, and like other people have this down the, the progressives know this right like the soapbox is a is a is a marxist group and they sit there they have a tiktok they have like 160,000 followers and they have specific content for tiktok robert reich has his own tiktok and he has a team of people who specifically make these videos for him and make them for for tiktok um the, the biden administration got a bunch of tiktokers and stuck them in a zoom and it's like, here's a bunch of propaganda we're feeding you. Now go feed it to your followers. They're associated with like Gen Z for change, which has over a million followers. They're, they're a bunch of progressives, right? So everybody else has this down. That's why libertarians really need to get that down. And especially the people who are good at presenting things. Like, you know how awesome that would be to have like Tom Woods, like with, with a TikTok. And he, he's like, he's so, he's one of the most well-spoken libertarians out there he's so well spoken he's he's a, such a good speaker he's very intelligent on almost every broad matter somebody like people like him you know actually like learning how to do tiktok and stuff you know having people like that it would be awesome like we reach so many more people yeah i think even we we literally just didn't doing stuff on like youtube and we realized that like to get more attention, like you have to be able to cut things down into short videos and like YouTube shorts has it now, but like TikTok and Instagram. And like, there's a, there's a lot of tricks to it. You have to realize it's an entirely different form of consumption. Yeah. But um, this guy asked, Gen Z is politically active, but a large majority of them are socialist and communist. Thoughts on potential ways of uh, anti-communist action? 
I mean, they're, they're, it's not, it's not, it's not a majority of them. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're judging this by like Reuters, Reuters polls or whatnot that you see like, oh, how, how many people dislike socialism or dislike capitalism and like socialism, um, read the definitions that people think of when they hear socialism or capitalism. Look at those definitions and then co contrast that with those polls and you'll see that well, maybe it's not as bleak as I think. You know, most people aren't social. Most people are like, wow, that's retarded. Socialists, what? those people are dumb. They're mostly popular online because it's not as embarrassing for them. Because if they do that in public, everybody makes fun of them. They're like, wow, look at these morons with a freaking Soviet flag. Like, these people are really stupid. Unless you're on like a college campus, then you'll see it more. But for the most part, no, m most people don't lean that direct in that direction. But when you are dealing with them, the, the way I go about it is it's like, mo if you're going to be a communist, you're probably pretty dumb and maybe a lost cause, right? So I, I'm not going to harp on the people who I realize, oh, this person is just too dumb to actually like convince right but at the same time you know if they're dumb enough then they're they're not really a threat um, well a lot of people so are i young. find people that might yeah. you, you might actually be able to convince they're just they haven't really thought it through very much i think and like yeah that's kind of evident because that's why most young people aren't the same ideologically whenever they grow up um so how is political action justified when it relies on democratic and thus anti-voluntarist action I, I, I would ask, how is it not justified? Like, I don't know. I mean, I mean like, yeah, yeah. I, obviously, we're against uh, democracy as, as a concept, right? But like, you know, there, there's, there's different arguments for this. Um, but like, getting a, a libertarian legislator elected, like, are we really going to pretend like that's some sort of ethical net negative? Like, I mean... I don't think so. I really don't think so. Now, there's a very big difference between like getting some some like legislator, li libertarian legislator elected who's very like minded to us. And then also being like, oh, let me pick between Mitt Romney and, and Barack Obama. You know, these two guys who are practically identical, uh, but they're, they're two different political parties. If it comes to that, then you're like, oh, I don't feel ethical choosing the, the worst of two evils or, or to trying to decide which one's more evil. That that's okay. But like getting, getting libertarians elected, like that's, th there's in no uh, conceivable way. Do I see that as a negative? Yeah. I think you can be pragmatic without being uncompromising without yeah. being compromising. Yeah. Um, what are your specific interests within libertarianism? I guess he means like you know economics or like particular issues um i mean economics mostly i would say uh i i i'm a big fan of economics uh, austrian economics um specific interests i mean does it have to be like more specific than saying something like economics i feel like you know economics is a bit of a a broad statement maybe Maybe like, I don't know. Uh, anti, anti, anti communism is my favorite part. Um, are you, are you a pragmatist or anti prag? Are principles fundamental? He says, don't give a dodgy answer. Um, pragmatist and anti prag i feel like there's there's too many people who kind of like abuse those terms i'm not like a neo prag like a post libertarian i feel like those guys are pretty cringe they're basically just just paleo conservatives and they're like oh yeah we're, we're, we're kind of libertarian no, no no you're just they're just paleo conservatives just call them paleo conservatives or what i call them is is neo progressives i like that term because it's the polar opposite of paleo conservative and my point is that you can't be a conservative and be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting more and more for big government and, and, taxing, and taxing families and taking away power from families and churches and in community and giving it to the state. You know, I'm like, oh, that's not very conservative. So you're just a progressive, but you're not like the old progressives who are like, 
oh, uh, we love gay people. You're like the new progressive who's like, oh, I hate gay people. So neo-progressive. Um, so uh, within that whole thing, no, I'm not a neo prag, but I do know how to be pragmatic, right? Like um, I mostly I mostly talk in pragmatic terms, and I'm like teaching people about stuff. Um, I, I don't talk a bunch of uh, a bunch of philosophy, a bunch of ethics, uh, epistemology. I'm not like you know. Let, let's talk about. Um, uh, rationalism uh praxeology all the time i when i when I, i'm my goal is to you know convert people for the most part or to give people the uh the arguments they need you know when, when they when they find people like socialists and stuff like that and they're having these conversations with them and for the most part people aren't going to react to that stuff they're not going to react to the the praxeology to ar argumentation ethics anything like that they're going to react to the empirical evidence and so you know I, I i try to focus on like empirical evidence and you know like and and, and pragmatic stuff but I, I still don't consider myself to be like this hyper pragmatic hyper pragmatist um yeah because i do think principles are important you know if you're not maintaining your principles that are like differentiating yourself from the other sides then what are you like you can can you call yourself a libertarian if you're not like keeping libertarian principles i i would say no so i i don't know if that answers the question i'm just hard question to answer but <laughs> yeah are you are you opposed to uh agorism i know you kind of answered that but and uh, i'm not and, opposed to agorism no we're not uh i guess a lot of people when they say agorism they're like very like anti-pragmatic but i mean i'm agorism, opposed to i'm opposed to agorists i'm not opposed to agorists. yes that's what i was about to say there's a difference between the methodology and the um the, and the people, people that use it as an ideology like the people who like, are like yeah i'm a i'm a yeah. i'm a furry i'm a trans furry libertarian look at my ar-15 that i built i'm like like stay within 50 feet of me okay like 50 feet don't yeah <laughs> those people like those people that say that their ideology is bitcoin it's like it's a methodology it's not it's not an ideology there's a difference no like legit like like 40 percent. <laughs> it's got to be at least 40 percent of agorists or furries it's a pretty big number <laughs> about 80 percent are bisexual at least um you say you especially enjoy debating communists do you think being left wings Left wing means to be fundamentally statist. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say the left wing is is fundamentally statist. I mean, even if it, when you talk to like the but anti status uh, leftists, they they're always statists on the inside. You know, like oh yeah, yeah free health care from the government sort of thing. Like that, in in no way do they want to shrink the government, right? Even when it comes to like things like the military, they're just like oh reallocate those funds. No, you try to you try to convince an anarcho syndicalist about lowering government spending or cutting taxes. They're not going to have any of it. Like, no, it, it, the only the only time they're going to go in that direction is if, oh, yeah, let's attack and destroy the government and, and, and then abolish it. But in that case, when it actually does happen or something similar, maybe like the Paris Commune, Catalonia. Then what do they do? They just build a new state. Just build a new state, and uh, nothing's different. In fact, it is often worse. Uh, they start executing people even more. <laughs> the, uh, in Paris, coming, they're like executing clergymen. They did the same thing in Catalonia. They they banned people people from leaving. Which you know, if you're if you're familiar at all with um with like neo reactionary philosophy, what they, what they, a lot of them say is the most basic human right. Are the only human right there's different different um versions of it but the, the most basic human right is the right to exit like so in catalonia they're like oh you're not allowed to leave without getting permission from the party which totally isn't a state it's just a party then if you're if you're violating the right to exit no that's 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 pretty status that's that's not anarchist so yeah left to start inherently uh anarch uh, or inherently status was there more more to that question or was that it I feel like there was really more. okay maybe um, that was yeah that, i mean that's it's kind of a 
an open-ended question. Um, do you, are you excited at all, like, about any sort of, like, I guess, like, pre presidential campaign under, like, any libertarian presidential candidates? Like, does that excite you at all, or do you think that's... I don't even know who the presidential candidates are going to be. Like, I, I mean, guess maybe Dave Smith is, like, one that I've heard. I mean, Dave, about. let's say Dave Smith's a presidential candidate. He's going to get slandered even worse than Ron Paul did because Dave Smith, like, you know how they're like, you know, Ron Paul said all this stuff in his, in his newsletters. Dave Smith actually says that stuff. So it's just like, you know, I don't know if it's actually going to be a good thing because he's just going to get slandered by everybody who actually pays attention to him anyways. And then I don't know. It, 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 it might, it might, it might, it might be a net positive if he runs. It might be a net negative. I just, I just don't know. Um, I'm not too worried about the libertarian presidential candidate. We should not be focusing on that. We should be focusing on local stuff first. Um, my, my mayor is an ANCAP. He's a, he's a Rothbardian. He's a self-proclaimed Rothbardian, anarcho-capitalist. Um, that's what where we should be starting with. We should. He's a he's a registered Republican too. He's. We, I got a Republican mayor. He's an anarcho capitalist. That's great. That's fantastic. We should have more of that. He tries his best to protect the people of the county um, from taxes, from from mandates, and all that stuff. Um, that's is excellent. We should we should do more of that. Not not worry about presidential elections because that's that's never going to happen. Not anytime soon, anyways. I live in like Louisiana, and I can't even like conceive of the idea of having an ANCAP mayor. <laughs> like it's like it's like great. out of the realm of possibility, and all of that's because of activism. He's so like, like he's like six foot eight. He's a he's a former uh, WWE wrestler. He's spoken at like um, Young Americans for Liberty events, and I think he's spoken at the Mises Institute before, if I'm not mistaken. I think I know who you're talking about, but I can't think of his name. Glenn um, Jacobs. Yeah, he's cool. Um, do you think that belief in government is due to quasi-religious belief in government, or, or so? If 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 so, would you conclude that anarchists hold an aesthetic relationship with government? I'm not sure I understand that question. Are they asking like, if is belief in government kind of like a religion? I, I think mean, it's weird. their second question sums it up way better. It says, "Do you think there's a difference between political ideology and ideology?" I mean, I mean, yeah, a lot of a lot of people who are like pro state, they, they kind of act like it's a religion in, in a way. Um, but I don't know, that's a, that's a, a draw. Everyone will always wants to draw like religious lines, comparisons to like everything like, oh, you're like a you're like a fundamentalist um, with this this thing and this thing um like i i find it weird to be like oh yeah the anarchists are like the atheists especially since i'm not an atheist myself so like putting myself in the atheist position i don't know it, it just it's it just sounds weird to me what was the second question again difference between ideology and political ideology yeah i think it's kind of this summing up the same question i don't know that question um, is too vague like i mean political ideology is part of your ideology like ideology you're talking about like everything like your entire life philosophy your you know religion your ethics more your view on morality your view on metaphysics everything literally everything like is that what we're talking about when we see ideology because i mean like, political like ideology, ideology would be like one yeah. subset of that and it should reflect on your personal ideology if, you, if, if you're it's contradictory then what's the point what's the point of having it yeah i feel like they should be synonymous otherwise there's a problem there logically yeah um so what do you think i guess of like ein Rand's like dogmatism maybe is, is a good word for it um or maybe it's not I, I don't know do you have any thoughts on objectivists in general i mean objectivists are like are like logically m more logically coherent neocons i mean like i mean let's be real like, every objectivist is, is is just a neocon low-key they just act just like neocons i mean the, 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 a lot of neocons like originally they were the objectivists um what is his name um paul paul ryan or ryan i think it's his name. paul ryan i think so i think his name uh, speaker he's, he's an objectivist 
right? And pe- people like him, he's he's a neocon. You know, they're 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 uh, they'll be like pro war often. Like um, Ted Cruz said, he loves Ayn Rand too. Yeah, he did. Yeah, a long uh, time ago. But yeah. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> they'll be pro war a lot more. They'll be a lot more uh, pro gun control. I mean, I don't know if I can call uh, Ted Cruz is a is is religious as, as far as I know. I he's don't actually think he's pretty good on economics. Yeah, I, I don't think he's an objectivist, but there's a lot of people who are fans of Ayn Rand, and they'll read yeah. like Atlas Shrugged, which is a decent story and a, and, a, and a good story to like you know introduce people to some of these concepts of of individualism. You know, her her fiction's decent. Um, you're not going to learn a ton, but it, it helps put some of that individualism and that uh, uh, stuff into into perspective. Um, but yeah, I mean, objectivists—they're they're pretty annoying for the most part. You know, they're often like really—they uh, get really caught up in like the uh, philosophical terms and stuff like that, and just want to become total uh, sophists. Um, I, I don't like um, debating them and stuff like that. But but full <laughs> piece. Um, do you have like I guess any notable disagreements with Papa? Um, Hoppe in 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 one interview he said he was like basically pro choice. I would disagree with that. Um, but I I, I don't know. Hoppe he 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 said a he he rarely talks about abortion. He said a few things like in in Democracy the God that failed he mentions abortion briefly and put, has it in the context of a bad thing. But of course, also just because he sees something as a bad thing or degenerate doesn't mean he wants it to be banned. So, um, but he, in, in the past, he made it sound a lot like he's, a, he's pro-choice and I would consider myself to be pro-life. I wouldn't even say I'm like an evictionism, like Walter Block's thing, because I have disagreements with Walter Block on that. But there would be, there would be that. Um, I think, I think Hop is an atheist too. Um, Let me think. Uh, I, I I don't I don't like how Hoppe goes and invites people like Jared Taylor, and and, and people like that to some of his events. Uh, you know they they're like hardcore status and stuff, and sometimes like actual like white nationalists. And you know I I get like he's bringing them because. He's like, oh, we're, we're like doing the whole free speech thing. And these are people that have been silenced everywhere. And we're, we're bringing them here to talk about like certain subjects. I get that. But at the same time, it's like, is it really worth the sacrificing optics? Um, I would say no. So, you know, so some, of the, some of the stuff he does, um, personally, I, I would disagree with, yeah. He invited like Richard Spencer and stuff too. I've heard that. Yeah, I mean Richard Spencer. Like pe- people often ignore that that was a time before he was he he was like a blatant Nazi. Um, you know he he got worse later on, and then Hoppe later like condemned him for that. It was like yeah, Richard Spencer. You know went off the deep end, and, and I don't like him. Um, but yeah, he, he, same thing he with um, Gavin McInnes with Dave Smith too. They do that. Um. Since the term capitalism is often used wrongly and has a bad name, shouldn't we embrace the term voluntarism instead? No, because people are people aren't familiar enough with it. Um, you know, you know, there, there's arguments to be made like, oh, we should use um, a new thing because people have like such a, a bad connotation to this one thing. But like, most people aren't anti-capitalist. So abandoning that and trying to say, oh, we're doing something different, they're just gonna think you're a communist. I mean, I get that a lot from Republicans. So like, you just, you sound kind of like a communist. I'm like, shut up, bro. Like, oh, so using the word capitalism is pretty important to that. Cause I mean, for the most part, the people we're gonna convince are gonna be other right-wingers. They're gonna be Republicans you know, in different, different forms of right-wingers. And most of the time, they're more pro-capitalist. Um, you know, and when dealing with leftists, it's just like, you know, you, you just have to be clear on what you mean. Like, you're like, no, I'm not arguing for 
uh, capital ruling the world, whatever that means, whatever that even means. Okay, let me just tell you what I'm arguing for. And we'll, we'll use that definition. And if you're not going to use it, then I'll just use a different word. All right. Uh, you, know, you know, like adjust, adjust to who you're talking to. Um, but I, I, I say capitalism and I'll just correct people on that term. And I, I use like Hoppe's definition of capitalism and socialism that he gives in you know, a theory of a theory of socialism and capitalism. So capitalism's a uh, economic and social system of private property and um, the ability to exchange private property through through contract and free trade. Um, and then socialism is any system, systematic um, aggression or uh, suppression of private property. And a lot, a lot of Marxists have used this very similar definitions of, of socialism. Yeah. Um, you could kill Karl Marx or Maynard Keynes um, out of the history books. Which one would you choose? Out of the history books or like cause them to, to have died at a certain point in their life? Um, I, I'm not sure I understand like that, 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 that part of the end there kind of throws me off yeah i guess just kill them here. i don't know why you'd want to remove them from the history books yeah remove <laughs> them from the history books as in like right now we're like oh suddenly you can't read about them or like they were they were born and they did their stuff but now they're not like historically relevant or I'm, I'm both killing them or, or or removing them from existence like they never existed uh i mean pfft marks like I, I i feel like we can't even come close to arguing that john maynard Keynes has caused enough damage uh, as much damage as marx yeah i think marx is probably like the most like influential like one of the most influential figures of the last like couple hundred years um yeah. so if a man if a man is hanging from your flagpole outside your window with a long drop below him do you have a moral responsibility to let him let him in through your window, or are you in the right to say, get off my flagpole? Dave, David Friedman is in the chat. David Friedman is in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, so in these type cases, I like to think, like to think about what's reasonable. You know, like if someone accidentally um, falls on your property or something like that, like there's there's a lack of rationality in what they're doing. Like they didn't rationally choose to do this thing. I do think that you have to consider like proportional force, right? Um, you know, if someone's like running away from like a, a, a gunman, they're like shooting at them and like, oh, let me find a place. And they like jump into your car or jump over a fence into your guard. I think like they're making that, that decision with sort of a lack of, of real rational ability. They can't like rationally choose, you know, oh, I'm not gonna trespass on this person's property. And you know, they've, they've violated your property and maybe later on you can have them um, compensate you for it, especially if they cause any damage. But to, to be like, oh no, I, I can fling the person off of the, uh, off the flagpole. I feel like that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Um... Are you at all like, uh, are there any like, I guess the leftist type libertarians, I guess some people call them the cathedral. Um, do you think they're like a, a, like a considerable threat to liberty any time in the future? Like leftist, like libertarian socialists? I guess like, like progressive cringe, libertarians. Progressive, like, or like, like Nick Sarwark. Yeah, like the cringe types, you know? Yeah, like Nick Sar, people like that, you know, uh, as I like to call them federal agents. Um, yeah, that they are they're a threat. They're gonna do a lot more, a lot more um, damage than good. You want them as far away from you as possible because they're going to embarrass you. They're gonna make you look like an idiot because they're calling themselves the exact same thing that you call yourself. So those types of people like leaving the Libertarian Party and stuff like that, which there's a lot of socialists in there too, and leaving like the Libertarian Party because of the Mises Caucus. It's fantastic having those people far away. And sometimes I've had like people who were like ANCAPs that I knew and they're like you know I'm, I'm I don't think I'm an ANCAP anymore you know I'm thinking some of this social stuff sounds good I'm like I've known you for a bit now man and you're a complete moron and you honestly make us look stupid so please 
don't be an ant cap and and do that go go on that path and become something else because you're doing more harm than good agreeing with me <laughs> you know um i've told people that several times before actually you know sometimes it just has to be said yeah there's people you know it's the same think about like if you're religious and you're like trying to trying to talk to somebody about like your religion i know a lot of people probably religious that are listening you know a good chunk right and think you got another guy who walks up and he's like yeah i'm a christian too and he just starts saying the most retarded stuff ever and just completely turns off the person you're talking to and it's like no don't call yourself a christian if that dude was like yeah i want to go be a muslim and you should be like yeah okay go call yourself a muslim now i'm cool with that you're just gonna make them look stupid now you know um yeah so that's how i see it do you think the uh i guess like the, the left libertarians like the actual like I guess more like socialist types. Do you consider them to be a threat at all, or maybe less so a threat? Um, like if it's a threat in the same way as in like making us look bad, then I would say no because most of the time when someone's like, "Yeah, I'm a libertarian socialist," everybody else is gonna be like, "That's not a thing. Shut up. You're not a liber- No, shut up." <laughs> um, I don't think people. But- are they like a threat practically like you know pe- people we should be worried about harming us in the future no just look at them they're like i'm worried i've 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 dealt with these people before last time last time i was around a bunch of antifa guys all of them were at least four inches shorter than me and i was armed i'm not worried about them like now do you so a lot of the time, like, I guess Antifa gets like a lot of uh, whenever like shit goes down in protests and stuff, everyone's like, you know, Antifa, Antifa. Do you think that's justified or do you think maybe that's a little bit mischaracterizing what's happening? Wait, what's that? You mean like Antifa riots and stuff? Yeah. Do you think it's more like, a, I guess <laughs> there's a Democratic politician that used the term like a local opportunist or something. Do you think it's it's more just people that are like kind of like... uh kind of like not really political that are just like stealing shit because they can get away with it? Or do you think that it, a lot of this really is just political violence? Well, I, I, I can, I actually want to add a little something to the last point, go to the gym guys, go to the gym and then you don't have to worry about these people because you'll be stronger than them and you can destroy them and buy a gun too. Um, but on that point, um, I think there's a lot of opportunists in there and there are people who are like, they don't care about any of this. They don't follow any of this stuff. And they just see a bunch of people out there and they're like, let's go see what happens. And then people start stealing stuff and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just steal stuff with them because why not? You know, I can get away with it because they have extra protection that other people don't have clearly. Just just look at the, uh, the uh, Black Lives Matter writers versus the uh, january 6th people um clearly clearly there's a a, a certain uh, political leaning where you're going to get more privilege than others um you know some people can burn down a town hall and kill cops and get away with it and some people can uh can't get away with walking down a hallway so yeah, the, it, I, I'm, I'm sure it's very mixed. You know, a lot of those people are just very emotional and, and, and unintelligent people who are just kind of like walking around like like drones and just doing whatever that they see other people do. Um, so in the wake of like all this like school shooting stuff, you've seen a lot of like, I guess, Republicans say that we need to arm teachers and stuff. I think the Uvalde mayor even signed something that would give guns to a government, unless I'm that was misinformation, but uh, some, they're trying to take initiative to do something like that, apparently. Um, do you think that harming teachers is a good idea to solve this? Or do you think that are, are like, what are there like reasonable approaches besides obviously like stuff like abolishing public schools? Do you think can be taken to, to solve something like this? I mean, I don't think like overall, I don't think there's like a solution per se right like i mean this is something that's been consistently happening for quite some time um 
and not a, it's not happening more often, right? Like people will cite statistics and like, oh, there's been 800 school shootings in the past week. It's like, no, no, there has stuff in the parking lot and stuff like that. Yeah. Those like, numbers are inflated. <laughs> there, there was one case where like some dude like killed himself in like a school parking lot and the school hadn't been open for eight years. It was just a, it was a, it was an abandoned school parking lot. The dude shoots himself in the head. And then they're like, this, that's a school shooting. Kids died. Kids died there. And they'll yeah. like literally use that as an argument that, and, and they're, they're indirectly saying, yeah, kids died there when the guy shot himself. It's ridiculous. Um, overall, um, Grant, Grant Dewey, um, he's, he's one of the foremost like experts in, in mass killings. And he's done a lot of, uh, a lot of research on that. And he, he found that there wasn't, um, mass shootings happening more often they, they are becoming deadlier though and you could theorize about that for different reasons but you know mass shooters are, are three times more likely to be suffering some sort of um, mental illness than, than the average person they're gonna be sociopaths psychopaths schizophrenic something something path or something phrenic a, a lot of the time or they're just really radical and well, there, there's different approaches you can come to this. And one is you look at it from like a, a classical criminology perspective, the classical school of criminology, um, which is pretty, it's, a, it's pretty compatible with libertarianism, you know, the perspective, because you're viewing people as rational actors who are perceiving some sort of end goal. And, you know, if you, if you make it too expensive or too risky to do that, then they're a lot less likely to do it. So the classical school of criminology, which is honestly libertarians need to read that a lot more. Um, what's the book? Uh, I think it's on crimes and punishments. It's not the it's not the Dach, 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 I can't, I'm not gonna be able to say his name. Dostoevsky. Um, I think I have the book somewhere right here. Actually, hold on. Let me let me see if I can grab it. Okay. Wanna... There we go. Bicaria, I guess his name, on crimes and punishments. So like I said, this is like super compatible with libertarians, especially like Austrians reading through this. You'd be like, holy crap, this sounds so familiar. Really good. And you can also find videos about it on YouTube. I think more people should read that. Um, so like the goal is to make things more expensive. You know, maybe we could say, oh, if you're, you're a mass shooter and we catch you, then we execute you. But a lot of them are already suicidal. So um I don't know, maybe we torch them. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, you know, having having armed guards, having um, the possibility of school teachers being armed, you know, getting rid of gun-free zones on, uh, on public property, that's a, that's a lot of very important steps because, you know, even if they are suicidal and like, oh, I'm going to go kill people and I'm probably going to die too, then you're realizing, oh, what if I uh, pull out my gun and I die instantly? And that, that's really embarrassing because whenever that happens, people you, nobody hears of you and even when they do hear of you they're like wow that is pathetic that guy died instantly like another a couple of years back this dude like came out with his like air 15 and his mask and he goes out and then he dies instantly and people were like making memes about like how pathetic it was that this dude just like went out on this big grand mission and died instantly and nobody wants that to be their legacy. You know, the, the, a lot of these people, they want to go down in history as like, oh, look what I did. Look, I'll, I'll kill all those people. My face is everywhere now. They don't want to be that embarrassing dude that dies instantly. So yeah, arming teachers, having armed guards, taking security precautions, that's important stuff. But overall, of course, like I said, it, it is largely a mental health issue, no matter how much people want to lie about that aspect. Um, so like lots of different, aspects of culture and society go into that so improving things overall will see less like mass shootings and less school shootings so it's hard to say like oh we have this specific policy that can actually decrease people attempting this you know it's it, it's really it's a really broad thing it's like the culmination of a lot of societal factors um one thing that kind of like makes me kind of like nervous about this stuff is like fact that the police were there and they just didn't do anything like uh because yeah. you can have armed guards right and schools already do like schools already have like armed security but like they're they're just police officers so like in a lot of times in these school students you don't hear about it because it wasn't as like ex it wasn't like as crazy as it was with this one but 
a lot of times there'll be an armed guard in the scene that doesn't do anything or that it runs away. Um, do you think there's any sort of solution to that? Like, or well, maybe I mean, like if your job right? is to protect people and you run away, there's serious consequences. To that. I mean, right now, cops are not legally obligated to protect us. They were not legally obligated within the confines of our United States law, our Supreme Court, the Constitution by extension, are not legally ob- were not legally obligated to go in there and stop anybody. In fact, they were more within their state rights. I'm going to make that specific, not within their rights, within their state rights to stop the teachers from or the, the 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 parents from going in. They were following the law more by stopping the teachers, which is ridiculous. So clearly that's a fundamental problem with our laws. And yeah, sure we should we should have if someone's like we should have people bound by contract getting into these jobs. Like if you are a security guard, if you are a cop, you should be bound by some sort of punishment or something, some sort of compensation that like, if, if you don't go and fight the, the shooter, then you're in big trouble. And especially if you like prevent other people from fighting shooters. But one of the, one of the reasons it's good to have someone that like in the school and like teachers, because they're the ones you know, like in there under fire, even if you have like a cop who's outside, he really doesn't have to worry about anything if a cop, if a guy goes in there and starts shooting people, right? Like if he just stands there, nothing is going to happen then. He's probably not going to get shot. But it's the people inside, like if you're acting in self-defense and you're a lot more likely to actually use deadly force against the attacker. So that is one of the good reasons why, it, uh, why we should um, allow teachers to be armed. Libertarians, some libertarians would say like teachers are basically child abusers and that it's not a good idea to arm them because it like we can't necessarily we, we might not be able to trust cops but we can't really trust teachers either do you think that's maybe worth the risk i mean let's be real we can we can trust teachers way more than we trust cops um like yeah there's a lot of bad teachers out there i mean first of all most of the like if we're talking like the like the libs of TikTok teachers that they post on there, you know those people, well, those aren't going to be the ones who go and get guns. You know they're not. They they won't get within fifty feet of a gun if if they can choose to do so. But I mean, sure you're going to have some bad people who are going to get a gun, end up with a gun. But like you know you can you can have processes that you go through your know, training and psych evaluations and stuff. I'm not saying go and hand out guns to teachers, right? I'm saying, say, hey, you guys can can still carry your gun. Just do this. You know, those, those, some training will teach you how to deal with these situations. We're going to make you sure you can shoot. We're going to show you how to securely um, lock away your gun and, and all this stuff, you know. And then if someone bad gets through that, then, well, they can do that with literally anything. And there's not really... Like that's that's no reason to prevent everybody from doing it. Right. So, um, I mean, let's let's privatize the schools first. I'm for that, of course. But we're talking about yeah. right now solutions. These are more like pragmatic ideas because obviously it's going to take a lot to be able to to do anything more in line with what we're hoping for. Um, what are your thoughts on Thomas Sowell? Thomas Sowell. Uh, I love Thomas Sowell. He's, he's, he's fantastic. I actually forgot to mention him as one of my influences. Um, Thomas Sowell, basic economics is like, you know, economics in one lesson is a great introductory book, but basic economics, it's like, it's just, just as easy to read, but it's got way more in there. So much more in depth. It's, it's fantastic. One of, one of the best, um, one of the best books, like, but anybody can read. Um, and then like intellectuals in society are into, is it intellectuals in society? Uh, his, his books on race and stuff, like he, he's got like, his stuff's so good. And his book on Marxism, which is underrated because you can't buy it because it's like 40 bucks. <laughs> um, his book on Marxism, um, I think they only did one print. That's why it's like so expensive. There's not that many of them you can find. A lot of really are, fantastic yeah. um because he 
presents Marxism. He like teaches you Marxism in such a coherent and good in good faith way, right? Like, um, if you go if you go and like watch a Hakeem video or like some leftist YouTuber, and they're like, oh, I'm gonna debunk this like libertarian argument or this like conservative argument, right? And they and if they're not like doing a direct a, a, a like direct response to like someone else's video, someone else's article, they're going to be presenting the idea themselves. And like, let's say you're watching the economic calculation problem critique by Hakeem, the, the tanky on YouTube, the way he presents the economic calculation problem, he's gonna poison the well. He's gonna present it in the most unflattering way possible, in the most bad faith way possible. He's gonna use mockery voices as he, as he presents it, right? Well, that stuff sucks. Right, because you're not learning anything. You're not learning what the other side actually thinks. Thomas Sowell goes through and teaches you Marxism in such a great way, and better than Marx does it, because he takes away all, all the he takes out all the fluff, and then he critiques it in a very excellent way. I've used critiques from Thomas Sowell's book on Marxism in in some of my TikTok videos before. Really, I love Thomas Sowell. You gotta love the guy. I mean. Be great if he was an Austrian. It would be great if he was a little bit more based in some ways. But like overall, he's one of the greatest intellectuals we have still alive today. I have economics fact, economic facts and fallacies right fallacies right here, and it's a really good book. Yeah, um, I have yeah. that one too. It's great. <laughs> the Sagarist, I guess he's going to die on this hill. So, uh, isn't pragmatism when you sell out on your principles? No, like again, I I I, I was kind of I would love to hear him actually like give a single problem with what I said earlier, like voting for a libertarian libertarian legislator. Like, no, there's no problem with that at all. Right. Um, like, I mean, yeah, doing agorist stuff is cool. I think everybody should should engage in that, but to, to act like we can have agorism on such a large scale, at least in America, when we've, like, there's other countries like um, North Korea and, and Venezuela and stuff like that, where agorism is like an everyday part of a lot of people's lives, you know, and, and it's like a very, like, it's a very big thing, mass like black most- markets and stuff like that, like people are surviving off of black markets. Um, when it comes to America, it's just so many people are so far away from that. And I, I hate using this word, but privileged. Um, and they're just not going to touch that. And we're just we're, we're, we're like, I mean, we can definitely do some some damage with that. And, you know, we're seeing that in certain scales, like sure, like Bitcoin, you know, we're, we're seeing different things like that, uh, that, that, that are going to undermine the government. Um, but like overall acting like that's the sole thing that we can do in America, like this this is not really going to get anyone anywhere. It's just going to result in a ton. And I mean, a ton of furries. Like, (laughs) so. Um, Last question uh, that we're going to do here. Will libertarians ever compete against progressive Hollywood? With the what? Will libertarians ever compete against progressive Hollywood? Progressive Hollywood. Ooh, man, no, libertarians suck at movies, man. They suck at it. Um, I forget what the movie is called, but it, I, some of you guys might know uh, who Kevin Sorbo is. Kevin Sorbo, he's the guy who starred in the first God's Not Dead movie. As He's the atheist professor in, in God's Not Dead. And a lot of people know him from that. He also... he. He played Hercules, right? I think in, in that old in the old show. Kevin Sorbo was in this movie, um, produced by like a bunch of agorists and like libertarians. And uh, Adam Kokesh is in it. And the movie's so bad, man. It is it is one of the worst things you've ever seen. I went through, I was like watching clips, but oh man, it's so bad. They got like the, the worst green screen effects, and they have like this freaking um uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the the Agoras poster of like of Kronken. I don't know if I pronounce his name. I, I always mix up Kronken and like Kropopkin. They're, they're like pronunciation. You know, the, the, the Agoras guy. Are you talking? They had like the, the, the poster of him like in the in the thing and they went to the, like the Agoras wall and there's people like 
<laughs> like selling uh guns as like you know this normal you just walk up and buy a gun or or selling weed and all this stuff and it was just so goofy and i'm like no this sucks and then adam kokesh comes out and he's doing like the super cringy speech like at, the super adam kokesh speech and it was so bad and if you watch like like the atlas shrugged movies those suck they change that main actor with each movie they're like oh part one part two part three and they change all the main actors each time it's weird um uh, i those are the most libertarian movies i can think of but there's a lot of like there's a lot of like libertarian movies they're not like explicitly libertarian but they're they're very like libertarian movies that we can appreciate and a lot of one that's often cited is the dallas fires club oh yeah that one too did you say the incredibles Dude, the incredibles is very libertarian i mean i guess <laughs> that's true that, uh, but that did, that's not what the ones that came to my mind <laughs> um there's this recent it. like bruce willis movie i forgot what that one was called i i need a i need a Dallas Bruce Buyers Club is really good, though. I think we will watch that in VC one day. <laughs> um, yeah, like stuff yeah. like that. Um, Bruce Willis did, did this recent movie, Death Wish. I think that's a really cool libertarian movie. Batman's pretty pretty good and libertarian, honestly. It's about like all this state corruption and like a, a billionaire, this private billionaire goes and solves all this, all this crap and like breaks the law and like runs from the police and punches cops like no, that's, that's that's super libertarian honestly and there's a lot of libertarians in hollywood honestly vince Vaughn is a libertarian um rob schneider is a libertarian they're like they're both like and caps there's a lot of there's a lot of libertarians in hollywood um uh Glenn eastwood i think but I don't, he's kind of kind Glenn of eastwood is a libertarian now. yeah there there's several um Jeff, not Jeff Bridges. I'm thinking. I'm not thinking of Jeff Bridges. Um, I think Kurt Russell or Jeff Bridges. One of them. One of them's a libertarian, I think. Uh, and Zach Schneider is a, is a, is a objectivist. Um, he's really been wanting to make like a uh, Atlas Shrugged, his own Atlas Shrugged movie. Um, and then there's you know there's comic writers too, who, who are very libertarian. Um, Miller, I think the, uh, the the Dark Knight. Miller's a libertarian, so you know we have we have a lot of libertarians mixed in there. Now a lot of them are the more progressive ones, of course, but you know there's still there's still a lot of a lot of good libertarian esque movies, you know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you have to look at like a list or something, but there's a lot. Of them. Yeah, we certainly um, have like yeah. the, the anti-capitalist bias and the anti-businessman bias coming from Hollywood. But there's still a lot of good, like anti-government stuff and like pro-individualism. Like even even if you, it, it takes a little bit of reading into. But even if you look at stuff like like Loki, for example, Marvel, right? It's very free will orientated, and I think there's actually been a lot of stuff like that lately, like very free will orientated and very like against this like this like uh, determinism that a lot of like, you know, it's very fundamental things like Marxism, um, which, and that's, that's pretty cool, so. Right. Oh. Excuse me, um, I'm gonna have people sent to your Discord server. I'm gonna put it up here. Sorry, I can't talk. Um, but you just started this like, it wasn't long ago, I think. I think we already partnered with it once. But I'll send everybody that's in here. Uh, I'll do a, a ping and, and get everybody into your Discord server. It's a really cool place. It reminds me a lot of, like, the old, our old server before it got banned, the Right League. Um, oh, no, don't say that. <laughs> don't talk about <laughs> bans, man. Yeah, be careful. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, I was like, we're... we're my mod is like, all right, guys, no homo float, no homo float. The, homophobic no homophobic surge allowed and people were like messaging like dming me like hey ben why aren't we allowed to say homophobic slurs and i'm like guys like i would i would not like flip out on you guys if you were like doing that but like we don't want to get the server banned okay i'm sorry you're just gonna have to hold your tongue a bit 
hold your fingers anyways like it, it's fine you'll 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 live I think there's a, a good alternative on the matrix called like gilded or something but like the problem is that nobody uses it so it's like for a yeah. while discord's going to be like pretty much all we've got so it's you, you got to make some compromises unfortunately but. yeah i started as like a patreon only discord and then we were there was like barely any of us and it wasn't very active so i'm like well maybe i should just like open it up and then have like a patreon only uh chat and then so like we did that but then we still barely ever talk in the patreon only chat but still i got a lot of like good people who support me and like help me actually um keep doing content so that's that's really epic yeah um so i just linked in the server um i'm gonna put it in the youtube description too the youtube video might not be up for a bit because the audio was cut out for the first few minutes of the stream so i'm probably just gonna upload the zoom recording but um thank you for joining us uh, it was really fun um you know we it feel like half the time you know you're fruiting you're refuting an agorist but besides that it was it was really cool <laughs> I just, um, I just wanted him to like make an actual point yeah <laughs> i, I don't mean know. And if you're gonna like make points against people's like principles you have to actually know their principles first yeah you no know, that's kind of important yeah I, i'm sure he's at least somewhat intelligent uh but it's hard to see in a text chat um agris <laughs> are like unlike the uh the iq bell curve it's yeah. it's like you, no, you no no no. You know like uh you know like the ones where it shows like the the dumb person saying something like it, yeah also, like, I know Richard exactly Wolf what you mean. saying like capitalism isn't democratic and then it will show like like Milton Friedman saying capitalism is democratic and then Hans Hermann Hoppe on the, like the high IQ saying capitalism isn't democratic yeah it's like that but, like agorism so based and then it's like agorism is cringe and then agorism is so based. You know, it's like that. So it's very mixed, you know, and the, the furries are all on this side. All of them. It's, it's so. furries and fin boys. There's like a, the one, two furries combination. And boys. The two Fs. And they're always like the anti-capitalist ones too. You got the progressive the ones. ones in there. You yeah. from, from like saying the F word and stuff like that. Like, oh, that's the only law I want to, to ban you from calling me a slur. <laughs> yeah, those are the sensitive ones too. All right, so, all right, thank you for joining us. I'm gonna end it here. It's It's been a fun hour. Um, and if you ever wanna come back, for sure, we can make it happen. Absolutely. All right, yeah.